Hi mamas, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then hi, welcome. My name is Tori and I'm the Wild Mother and my channel is called The Wild Mother. And on my channel, I make videos all about motherhood inspired by nature and getting back to our primal ancestral roots. So that includes topics like eating a traditional nourishing foods diet, herbs and natural remedies, as well as respectful and conscious parenting. So I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel if those are topics that you are interested in. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the basics of what is respectful parenting, particularly this parenting approach called Rye Parenting. So this philosophy of parenting was founded by Magda Gerber and made popular by Janet Lansbury. Rye stands for Resources for Infant Educators and it is really based on the premise of respecting and trusting babies and children to be an initiator, an explorer, and a self-learner. And to remember that from the time that babies are born, they are whole people who deserve respect and communication and trust. So personally, I have found that this style of parenting really resonates with me and feels right and instinctual in many ways. Um, as with everything in life, I don't agree 100% with every principle, but instead I've studied and learned about it all and I apply the principles that work well for my individual child and our family. So my goal in this video is to really break down the basics of what Rye Parenting is according to the Rye website and Magda Gerber herself and Janet Lansbury specifically according to their websites. In this video I'm not really going to be sharing like my opinions or my experience um, using this method of parenting but what I'm planning to do is have a series come out after this talking about each of the individual points of respectful parenting and then diving deeper into um, how I apply the principles to my own life, what worked for me and what didn't, what I think about it, how you can apply it, etc. things like that. Um, but in this video today, I just wanted to have a video I can refer people back to on my channel that goes over the basic principles of Rye from the founder and the foundation itself. So everything I talk about here is pretty much taken verbatim straight from um, the Rye website, Magda Gerber's website, and Janet Lansbury's blog. So I will link all three of the articles that I'm referencing in the description box below and definitely feel free to check them all out to learn more about the style of parenting. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so what is Rye parenting? Well, according to Magda Gerber, the basis of the Rye philosophy is respect for and trust in an infant to be an initiator, an explorer, and a self-learner. Magda encouraged parents and caregivers to do this by providing the following five things. So the first thing is an environment for the child that is physically safe, cognitively challenging, and emotionally nurturing. Our role is to create an environment in which the child can best do all the things that the child would do naturally. So the more predictable the environment, the easier it is for babies to learn. And of course, as babies become more mobile, they need a safe, challenging environment in which they can move around and learn. Um, their exploration should not be handicapped based on the environment that they're in. Okay, so number two is time for uninterrupted play and the freedom to explore and interact with other infants. So we wanna give babies and children plenty of time for independent, uninterrupted play. And instead of trying to teach them new skills, we really appreciate and admire what the babies are actually doing in the moment and what they're actually naturally learning. So number three is to involve the child in all care activities so that the child can be an active participant rather than a passive participant. So during any care activity like diapering, feeding, bathing, dressing, Magda really encouraged even the tiniest infant to become an active participant rather than a passive recipient persistent in the activity. So parents create opportunities for interaction and cooperation and intimacy and connection um, through being wholeheartedly involved with the infant during the time that they are spending together anyway by doing these activities. So by being refueled um, 
and connected to their caregiver by such an unhurried caring experience, the infants are more ready to explore their environment with minimal intervention by adults once the caregiving activity is done. So basically, because they feel connected and close to you during diaper changes, um, and their cup is getting filled with involvement with you during these activities that most people would view as mundane and just hurry and rush through, um, the infant or the child is going to be more likely to be able to explore and play uninterrupted um, because their cup has already been filled with attention and love from you during these times. So number four is sensitive observation of the child in order to understand his or her needs. So we observe carefully in order to understand what it is that the child is trying to communicate and what their needs are. So oftentimes you will be able to spot a wry parent because instead of immediately jumping into a situation or getting involved in what a child is doing, they'll be sitting back, waiting, just really being present with their child by observation and trying to figure out what the baby or the child is trying to communicate and what their needs are. And then number five is consistency and clearly defined limits and expectations in order to develop discipline. So when children are in a very predictable environment and they know what their limits and their expectations for them are, they're going to have a much more pleasant and positive experience being able to explore for themselves inside of those boundaries. And so it's really important for the parent to provide clear limits and expectations on what's expected of the child so that they can be free to explore and develop and grow into a beautiful, wonderful little being. Okay, so those were the five basic RI principles and goals. So these nine steps that I'm going to reference next are taken straight from Janet Lansbury's website. And these steps are more action steps to help practically follow the five goals that were outlined by Magda Gerber. So this article that I'm taking these nine steps from is called RI Parenting, Nine Ways to Put Respect into Action. And these are the principles that you're going to mostly find right parents and people talking about online because they are more of the practical steps to help parents proactively take to follow the goals as outlined by Magda Gerber. So how does a parent put respect for babies and children into action? Well, number one is we communicate authentically. We use our authentic voices, though a bit more slowly for babies and toddlers. We use real words and we talk about real things, especially things that directly pertain to our babies and children that are happening now. We encourage babies to build communication skills by asking them questions and giving them plenty of time to respond and by always acknowledging their efforts at communication. Number two is that we invite babies to actively participate in caregiving activities like diapering, dressing, mealtime, and bedtime routines, and we make sure that we give them our full attention during those times. So number three is that we encourage independent and self-directed play. We do this by offering even the youngest infants free play opportunities, sensitively observing so as not to needlessly interrupt them, and trusting that our children's play choices are perfect. Number four is that we allow children to develop cognitive and motor skills naturally and in their own innate timetables. We do this by encouraging and allowing plenty of free play and not getting overly involved and interfering or trying to artificially teach them skills. Instead, our role is mostly focused on trust and trusting that they know how they need to develop best. Number five is that we value intrinsic motivation and inner directedness. So we take care to acknowledge effort and also take care not to overpraise. So we trust that our children know themselves better than we know them and we allow our children to lead when they play and to choose their own enrichment activities rather than project our own interests onto them. We want to encourage our children's passions and support them to fulfill their own interests and dreams. 
Number six is that we encourage children to express their emotions by openly accepting and acknowledging them. And just jumping in here, I personally believe that this is one of the most foundational and important principles regardless of your parenting style or what parenting philosophy you follow. I think that this is just a really important thing to do if you are trying to raise an emotionally mature um, child is to always acknowledge their feelings and emotions and never shut them down or tell them that they shouldn't feel emotion or they shouldn't feel anger, they shouldn't feel sad, um, but to welcome and accept and acknowledge every emotion. Okay, number seven is that we recognize that children need confident, empathetic leaders and clear boundaries. However, that does not mean shaming, distractions, punishments, or timeout. Can't wait to make a video on that and get into that more. <laughs> okay, and then number eight is that we allow children to problem solve and experience and learn from age appropriate conflicts with our support. And number nine is that we recognize the power of our modeling. We recognize that our children are learning from every word and every action about love and relationships and empathy and generosity and gratitude and patience and kindness and honesty and respect. And so more profoundly, they're learning about themselves and their abilities and their worth and their place in our hearts and in our home and in the world. So those were the nine action steps of Rack Parenting by Janet Lansbury and also the basic philosophies that Rye parents try to follow um, in raising their children. So if you are interested in learning more about Rye Parenting, then again, please check out all the links that I'm gonna leave in the description box below. There are also lots of amazing books as well that have really made a difference in my parenting through teaching about caring for infants and children with respect. So some of them are No Bad Kids by Janet Lansbury, The Whole Brain Child by Dan Siegel and Tita Payne Bryson. So also Punished by Rewards, which was really an amazing read by Alfie Cohn, and then also Unconditional Parenting by Alfie Cohn, which I actually have not read yet, but I'm planning to read it in the next few weeks, and I am anticipating that it will be really good. <laughs> the Theory of Objectivist Parenting by Rosalind Ross is another book that's really, really inspiring and really makes you think and will change the way that you view your relationship with your child. Um, Janet Lansbury also has a podcast that was really helpful when I was first learning about the Rye approach and respectful parenting because she takes different listener questions and goes through so many different circumstances with babies and toddlers and answers how to handle them in the respectful way. So that was really instrumental for me when I was first learning about respectful parenting and trying to undo some of the previous parenting patterns um, that I had been raised with or that I had seen exemplified, you know, in the world around me. Uh, so yeah, her podcast was really helpful. There are also lots of Instagram accounts that have really influenced me and um, that I will link in the description box below. And also I have been studying the Montessori method and Montessori and Rye, I think really go hand in hand um, and they work really well and complement each other very beautifully. So if you're interested in Rye, then you may also be interested in Montessori. So I love learning about them both and how to incorporate them both with my child to provide my baby and child with respect um, and autonomy from the very beginning. So I hope that this video was helpful to you. I know it was probably a little bit long. Um, stay tuned, please subscribe to my channel first if you are interested in respectful parenting because like I said in the beginning, this is just my beginner outline video um, for like what Rye Parenting is, but then I'm planning to do a series diving deeper into each of the steps um, that Janet Lansbury and Magda Gerber talked about and I really wanna dive deeper into more of like my personal take on them and um, how they, how it plays out practically raising children in this way with these different methods and what I've learned and what I've taken and what I've used and what I've decided not to use and what doesn't really work for our family. So I think you will like those videos if you like this one. So I'd love it if you subscribe and I think that's all guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a fabulous day. See you next week. Bye.